This study presents the investigation of reconstruction of 11 archaeological lekythoi for restoration purposes during the previous decades through the X-ray and X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy. The ceramics under study came from a collection of 903 archaeological artifacts dating from the early Bronze Age to the Byzantine period, generously donated by Eleni Martinu in 2019 to the Museum of Archaeology and History of Art in Athens. More specifically, the pottery under study was black and ring finger lekythoi from Attica or other nearby and close regions in Greece that were dating in the archaic and classical periods. Generally, the Museum of Archaeology and History of Art was established 80 years ago and exhibits comprise more than 8,800 objects either original or copies, which are housed in the building of the School of Philosophy of the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens. The aims of uh, this study was mainly to highlight the contribution of X-ray and X-ray fluorency played in identifying the recent reconstruction methods in archaeological materials in order to investigate whether or not these methods follow the international regulation of conservation practices and ethical standards. The 11 lekythoi under investigation are among uh, the 70 lekythoi that exhibit in the Museum of Archaeology and History of Art. The material under study in particular is six black figure lekythoi of classical period from Attica, three black finger lekythoi with white ground of classical period from Attica one red figure lekythos of classical period from Attica, and finally, one red finger lekythos of archaic period from Boya. We made the decision to research current reconstruction techniques in order to determine if we should keep them or replace them because of their unattractive final aesthetic image. For this reason, we used PXRF to test the suitability of the reconstruction materials and methods according to the international conservation standards on both the original parts and the newly added parts of the 11 lekythoi. Moreover, we used X-ray on the lekythos uh, um, 9339 since we had evidence that the metal wire was inside the object. At this slide, you can see the result of PXRF. The results of the original part are presented in the table 1, as well as the result of the added parts are presenting in the table 2. It was clear the different chemical composition of added parts in contrast to the original parts. The PXRF the data revealed that the original components of Likithoi had similar chemical components and thus similar raw materials. Furthermore, we can see the chemical affinity at these two diagrams. Taking into account the archaeological evidence, it was deduced that the raw materials possibly originated from Attica or neighboring and closed regions. In these slides, you can see a part of Attica and a part of Eboia that the raw materials possibly came from. According to the construction treatments, the majority of them found on the artifact, artifacts reflect extended intervening approaches that were applied by no professional in the previous years. Mainly, three distinct categories of, of interventions were observed. Particularly at the first category of intervention pieces of the pouch were added to the six lekythoids missing area. Now I'm going to show you the six lekythoids that different uh, part uh, from different pouch uh, were added at this object. This is the first one example with uh, uh, the yellow color. You can see the added part from other ceramic pot. This is the second one example. Also, you can see with a yellow color and white the different parts. And in this case, we have 
two different uh, boats, fragment of different boats that were joined to the original one. Another example with the same um, method. Another example. This is the fourth uh, object with the same method. And uh, in this case also, we can see with the yellow color the um, foreign part from uh, another object. This case is very impressive. As you can see, we have uh, many added parts from other uh, different uh, pods. And in this category, this is the last one uh, case. A very impressive case is this Likithos 9339, uh, in which we have two different uh, methods of interventions. Uh, this is a special case because metal wire was added to join the base with the main body of this object as well as some ceramic pieces from other pots were added as in the previous cases. We used X-ray in order to, uh, to, to see how uh, they had connected the base with the main body. And uh, with X-ray, we can see it clearly. At uh, two other Likithoi, uh, 9333 and 9332, this is the first example, uh, we observe fragments of other pots uh, that have been affixed to the original ceramic body and other missing parts had been filled with plaster. And this is the second uh, example. Another notable case is the Likithos 9327 that its missing areas merely appear to be filled with plaster without the use of intermediate protective layer along the edges. As this example, uh, the Likithoi, uh, which is the last uh, case, uh, has a gap uh, filling with uh, materials included unfired clay and fragments from other pots were observed. In an attempt to achieve a beautiful result, some early restorers fervently painted over previous uh, designs and added fragments such as handles to give to the repaired object what they believed to be a pleasing appearance. All the liquid we understand had artificial patina formation onto and its parts indicate attempt to achieve an ideal state. After all this observation, uh, we have some final outcomes. Uh, to sum up, over restoration was observed that, that lead to a false impression of the Likithoi, so we were careful when resembling pottery to make a restoration clearly dis distinguishable from the original. It is not ethical to use fragments from other pots to create a perfect final image, since it makes it difficult for both expert and visitor to distinguish the original part. Furthermore, the use of plaster as a filler is a common technique at the conservation process. Only if an intermediate protective layer is previously applied along the edges. Otherwise, the sulfur oxides will run into the fragments and the objects will be deteriorated. Lastly, the use of unfired clay is not an appropriate method, as the water contained in clay will degradate the liquidos over time as well. In general, conservators are guided by the ideal of minimum intervention, that is to say, to intervene as little as possible. As a result, the most of the recent added parts are removed and they were replaced by plaster with an intermediate protective layer 
5% paraloid B72 in acetone that was previously applied along the edges of the ceramic fragments. The combination of new technologies, X-ray and X-ray uh, fluorescence spectroscopy, allowed us to recognize and investigate the recent reconstruction uh, application by non-professional and to make uh, the most appropriate conservation decision for the future. We would like to, to thank you so much for your attention.